you know, and to everyone in general. A young farmer said that this kind of tree is not hard to grow, worn and rubbed and scratched and polished, broken and repaired, that bears the mark of our love and care, our mistakes and carelessness. Epistle. You are my friend, no compendium of singular devotion. Your book is here with me, sitting on the sofa, golden sunlight streaming in. Like the electric voice of a calm commander, you've been all the scenic places. What a beautiful life. Who knows who you are? Seven wise guys in Greece. Where did Confucius live? When the, when the Lone Ranger goes over there to get those eight pigeons, I'd gladly give you up, who'd give me up so easily. But you don't give up, so easily you're up on my calendar there. Colder weather, warmer clothes enter, great flocks of black coats cut out under the trees, dash in your big machine, in your big depot, the brain. Silence. Who is as eloquent as you? Nobody is as eloquent as you, that is you, that is a person. One middle-aged dame of swarthy complexion with earrings as big as after-dinner coffee cups could not play the original. Glaucus Magnolia, exquisite Indian, sailboat in the snow, inflexible equilibrium, all soldier, all poet, all scholar, all saint, all someone gift or meritorious success, one tough gazooka which loves all palookas, harmonious human multitude. Uh, I dedicate the reading of this next poem to uh, Kathy Brown, my immediate superior at work, who may be watching. The best of friends. Besides Vincenzo, renamed James, and Salvatore, later Frank, Alphonse, Amadeo, Ermino, later John and nicknamed Mimi, Umberto, Albert John, Matthew, Nick, Mafalda, and Rose, the five points, the plug uglies, the dead rabbits, confirm them in their tribalism. Mr. Terranova, artichoke king, Lubo the wolf, pathological killer, the ape-like monk Eastman, the aromatic Biff, a tall slim Jim named May, would go the limit for Johnny and Big Jim Colosimo. Bunny hug, pretty boy, Dardanella, yakky, hacky, wicky, wacky, woo, oaky, arky, and the zoo, rubbing elbows with love and putty, Mike the Pike, merchant of vice, who looked like a Suriname toad, wizened confederate Izzy the Rat, Hinky Dink, bathhouse John, who worked as a rubber in a Turkish bath, and Dion, to whose protection Jim owed his rise. Big Jim, bulky person, festooned with stones, precious blue elephants or horses on several fingers, on his belt, suspender, garter buckle, tie pin, on his fob, shirt bosom, cuffs and vest, he fastened a sunburst, hair gleaming onyx, agate eyes, no chip state of the rim, whose revivification translated cultic citations, alluded to numerous incantations, either held in hand or set on a stand, greenish calcite or argonite, big Jim, an operatic Louisa Tetrazzini shaking hands, welcome to Arnold's homeopathic lunch, Blubber Bob Gray, Madame Therese, Alice Fly, Nell Bly, Alkali, and Black May. French Emma, Sappho, English Ada, and Minna Everlay, married brothers who maltreated them. Tiny spasms of awe and humor carried them away in the mobile joys of joyous urgency, in the copper room, in the Moorish room, in the Turkish room, in the Chinese, Egyptian, and Japanese rooms heavy with incense, Paphians, the vice commission, a newsboy in a boot black, a green jackass, a red bull on the bed, a nude bearded hero punted by a prow, that shadow Savonarola, a long litany of Latin poets, everybody there was there, the best of friends. Before going out, I smooched you pretty lightly as you slept. Of your precious rest, 
precious you were not bereft or budged from it. I watched you dreaming and saw the dream modified, though reasonably, so it seemed you should be left to lie, and lying there beside I should watch to make sure provocateurs wouldn't botch your fluttering eye, hinted hair vision. Dream, I've gone to work, so dream, be safe, and don't let up till later. But get up, go when I careen home in a clapping double R, and stop me coming through the door, you with a smack right on my kisser. Seconds. A mackerel sky, masses, small, rounded, high, detached, lots of blue sky in the gaps, oozes, gutsy, gusty, motile pillows with pearly domes and steeples. Whooshing sounds loud high up. This natural occlusion stuff was the bunk, duenna, guardian angel, counselor, hygienist, midwife, governess, den mom, caring friend, where we bunked down in the eerie above the woe-lined streets. Your language, visible, suspended in air, a cloudy clump of hair springing into an O for seconds. The chamber I inhabit is finally cleared. Beautiful weather, just beautiful, just the way you say simply. Is there a term meaning a time more beautiful? No, doubt it. Beautiful weather, wonderment, leaves like rust. Wonderful crow fall in the yard making metal noisy as they drift into the chain link fence. Blam, beautiful ether. I walked home and collapsed on the bed. I walked home. I walked home collapsed. On the bed, beautiful weather. On the way home, I heard a couple of heels scrapping behind me. Beautiful wonderment of weather. Along the concrete, I heard two heels scrapping. I heard scraping, collapsing on the bed behind me. I think it was the springs. They, no doubt, are beautiful, touching, tired. A persistent noise has followed me home. Shit. This persistent noise has followed me home. Crow, metal, beautiful, link the scrape. Rust, is there a term more beautiful? Women, listen to the melodic, episodic, thump, thump, whap, thump, heart of Steve Levine. Walking about in the pale sneakers of doubt, informed in love by the broody hobgoblins thereof, he is a man with a dream. It is pretty green in his own white room. When the pressurized whoosh of this ornate dream appears on a series of inner scrims and screens, he's just mulling over homey comforts, auric hassock. What is he saying? What is he thinking of? I am Steve Levine. I am Steve Levine. I am Steve Levine. I wish all my hopes possible now is all. Let them increase to blaze in perfumed ears, like a plenitude strength of beauty there. To be serious, not silent in my brilliant day, I hope a hop off into space, strutted by Millennium's tack. Ich bin ech yid, Steve Levine. Thinking this now, I walk along, kind of waving my arms and thinking, almost wordlessly, now shortening my steps, my thinking, now thinking more rapidly in time than thinking. Somewhere there grows a specious white rose. I know it waits for me in Wahoo, Nebraska, or is it Tennessee, where a kook is busy listening to messages from beyond the beneath, whistling through the fillings in her teeth, back in the days of those years. 
And I meld my brain terrain, and I meld my vision's melange of sailing on memory's tenebrous sea and going on with a willful heart on. By myself I walk today, maybe to stop and joke, to mingle gaggling gee wizardry with babble or just plain talk. Then suddenly you fly into view, stop and quiet eye, cop a glimpse of our planet's random grace, and guess that you're a dancer, legs slimly styled, not mildly blessed, but muscular, as I imagined, are the best. And you yourself are genius, too, for flying so fully into view, so singularly among the thundering numbers. You, vision, heart's flash, thundering umber, allow thought to enter passion, to springboard off infinite suggestion, and as silence interrupts the saggy bedsheet, clocked together paper, aerate this severe order. Our looks and proposed books bobbing in its wake, whose fleshy talk is ornament, whose spirit is really grace, the turned-on germ of acute new beauty. By the alcove's black projecting table, the love bite rests on his arm. His arm leans stably, but the bruise is turning like a pint-sized galaxy. Who made it? Who with his own heat and planet's fleshy grace? Who with her murmuring, turning deep space eyeballs? brownish blue and yellow now, swirl away from them, likewise from his little heaven, out past the toothy girdle gating this guy's kitchen window into air, turning into air, where they meet and sometimes mingle even. It comes like a blast after a morning of unnatural peace and quiet. Those northern mists brewed in her southern snood grew loud, loud, <laughs> then flew as I stood stewing in my brooding. As they say, I knew it had been. Splatters, total smudge. O oh, pulchritude, O oh, chalcedony, bluish quiet memory of a day that's finally fine and scattered now. Our next guest, Ted Greenwald. Um, I've seen him read an, a few times. Last time I remember seeing him read was at St. Mark's Church, and after the reading, I wrote a poem and showed it to one person. That person says, it's a good poem, but Ted won't like it. So I never showed it to anybody else. And I'm going to read it now, and tough if you don't like it. <laughs> poem for Ted Greenwald upon his reading at St. Mark's. Colored repetition, repetition, repetition. And you see your hair doing a backwards commercial for the Grecian formula. And you see New York City as I do, holding wonder in a glass jar with holes in the top for the energy to breathe. And you see the body as Geppetto had designed Pinocchio piece by piece. And your poems hang together, limb, hinge to limb. And it works. And they liked it. And colored repetition, repetition, repetition. And colored repetition, causing laughter. What a sound. So I stoop and smile gaily, picking giggles from the ground. Ted Greenwald. The poem is called Ah, and it's for Susan Hall. The pink room, the pink bed, the pink sheet covers and spread on the bed, covered with a pink canopy, the pink wastebasket and desk, the pink carpet, the pink phone waiting for dates, the pink bear and dog resting on the pink bulge on the bed, the pink books on the pink bookshelves, the pink dresses hung neatly on pink wrapped hangers in the pink closet with pink sliding doors, the pink dresser drawer, the pink sweaters, blouses, panties stacked neatly between pink socks and pink piles among a couple of pink body stockings. The pink tile bathroom smelling nice, pink carpeted next to the pink windows with pink Venetian blinds open a slit to let in a pink sun through pink curtains. The pink body lying among the room, flesh pink and washed and brushed, scrubbed like love with pink blonde down. The pink legs and feet pointing to the pink chandelier on the ceiling lit by pink bulbs. Pendants illuminating pink thighs pink thighs illuminating pink lips with pink down, and lips illuminating the interior pinkness aimed like a pink slipper into the pink sky, tiptoeing briefly on the pink clouds outside the pink room, bearing pink down with a pink bow like a pink heart getting pinker and pinker, pinker. The pears are the pears. The table is the table. The house is the house. The windows are the windows. The car is the car. The roads are the roads. The streets are the streets. The white line is the white line. 
The curves are the curves. The thigh is the thigh. The knee is the knee. The arms are the arms. The eyes are the eyes. The mouth is the mouth. P.S. Enormously difficult to explain exactly how I feel, clearing my brain after seeing where I'm going, after resting, after taking care of this and that for another round of works, finished one thing, found a solid voice, temporary, I'm sure, time to lean back and think about life, roughly halfway over. Over what? Water? Very little in the way of theory cropping up like grass. More and more, the time turns to practice. The sense of unity I feel should be somewhere I guess will be there long after I'm gone and someone else looks back on all this and talks to me across the ages with me talking through my poems. Up to a certain point, 100, 200 years, language, the ass, carries the burden of meaning while after, say, around 500 years hence, a flip-flop, whoops, a pothole, the meaning carries the language by then, like me, changed beyond recognition. And to think this doesn't even require a grand plan, although if I recall correctly, at one time I thought it did and had one ready for anything. Nowadays, I'm more or less content to let a lot of things take their own courses, like amiable rivers making blue lines down the map of history. I'm not saying that some things don't infuriate me. They certainly do. But I've learned mostly through, mostly through stupid repetition. The same patience I apply to my own works, moving them out of range of good and evil, is applicable in a romantic way, I guess, to things natural and unnatural. Outside myself, I'm on better terms, though still able to bear grudges with most things and people, more sociably amiable, no longer stand in a corner at parties, facing into the wall, smelling the school like plaster, getting plastered. Now I talk it up, and even when down, never talk down, but remain subdued. I've learned to like winter's morn, but hate end of same. Feel relief at spring, crave sun on body, enter through the lobby of annual depression. Have greater sense of personal comfort, expanding horizons, ability to survive, and know how far I'll go to do. In this year of famine and pestilence, have learned to keep my mind and ear cocked like a gun to the true poetry of the language to go off and fill the sky of the mind with angels conversing and have enough memory left to remember and write the angels down without pinning a single body or wing. I have finally returned to the cheerfulness I had when very young, before the bubbles in my personal self had gone flat, when the fingers of school, having opened my thinking cap, kept the bottle open long enough to let the fun out. Amidst a multitude of others, Asking one way or another, whatever happened to you? You were such a cheerful kid, and that I am. One foot in the other world, the other foot in the other world. What were his last words as he slipped through the sleeve of the curve of the finger, looking down straight into shoulders? Much it is to ask whether attention to light and detail seems nice in light of the suit. Grippers clutch the nice guy, finding out an hour and one and a half countries later how nice he really is. He's disgusting. But I like him. You do, too. There's something about him. An ear launches me through the morning. I've taken the phone off the hook. While little things, a sound here, a smell, remind me of little things before. A boat carries off my brain while my fingers don't know what to do with themselves. I'm at my wit's end, taking my eye for a second off the hook, and brighten like the sun just did everything. What happened to the clouds? Complete balancing weather meets with the eye of complete off-balance brain, tottering through verbs. Dew covered, covers the shoe with minute observations, piling up in an organic unity, life, chair, and sitter. Dog floats in with pipe, slipper, and paper. Sits partially over the instep of unshorn foot. Snores like a saw through the glories of news logs. The reader soon falls his head down in bliss, or is it asleep without dreams, in a city where the nose comes occasionally to a water-smelling patch of haze on the face, moving toward the river in a phrase. Quiet dampness appears everywhere as if out of nowhere, making the quiet pleasant and the light cool. Thoughts turn to wheels and wheels and make the journey that's been contemplated so long in the back of the mind where I keep what I want to make sure I remember. The hub of existence reflects spikes of light and spokes. The words rise like letters to the stars, filled with frankness, tenderness, admiration, a reservoir of love, deep as a wishing well with a penny hitting the top of the water, as thoughts put on the garments of flesh and wonderment. Off the hook. He is gone now, taking his body with him. 
when all the time I thought it was the beauty of his mind I loved. It is a thousand years. I am bumping into the heavens. Music descends into my ear and leaves the brain alone. It goes directly to spine. Wait a minute, moves out again along the fingers of planets. So every single syllable sounds double. A word spoken twice, once audible. Goes on. The, s the beat comes out the speaker. Bodies start to move, yearning to be next to leaning on some other body. They get up to dance, couples a common denominator, although a few threes and fours can be seen around the floor. Spines showing through clothes take on unearthly glow, as if all things unthought of when in the course of events have surfaced. Having a good time between songs, everyone stands around, breathing, saying to each other, what fun, is the next one fast or slow? Can I have this dance? Who wants to know? Words travel in the back of my brain where the trap door opens to let in noises from the outside to admit friends who have come into town for the evening, stop by for coffee, drinks, talk a while, it's late, goodbye. A twinkling stays as long as I clean up and sit down to rest in my favorite music chair next to the door. I start to expect to have company when I'm restless and lonely and one or many I know feel identical, make a phone call. Rain falls straight down, hits me straight on the head, flattens out skull, straightens brain, falls straight through heart to feet. Feet walk around, get wet, while tongue abbreviates the damps. Hair curls around the wheel of the tongue, forming driven words. I bless his good fortune. I'd lost patience with things as they were. Gray, neither here nor there. What a wonderful dinner. I really enjoyed myself. The food couldn't have been better. I liked everything. You saw the way I ate. Boy, was I hungry. I could have eaten a horse. The wine was just right. Went with, it went good with everything. We have to do this sometime soon over our place. It was a terrific dinner and a lovely evening. Sitting around, try to circle in on a point I want to tell you about. You poke the air out of the air with your finger, making your own point, emphasis. Something's left out. I leave for emphasis. Airy rushes punch my shirt through a window of sunset dirt and send me reeling like a lure through the water nerves of America. Once on the other side of somewhere, I relax and become someone else. Not that I behave different, just behave less often. The sky offers me solace and office space. In stars, I keep in drawers wearing nothing but a little mist and a halo. I will imagine myself a sympathetic headlight knocking on the door of the night to borrow a cup of sugar from the beautiful neighbor who's moved in without even the clothes on her back. Would it be possible to borrow a cup of sugar? Sure, sit down, honey, make yourself comfortable. I ease down in a big dipper. Rubbing shoulders. As hair grows gray and eye tired, sleeves will lengthen and trail one fat finger in the dust. Arms will shorten and sit reassuringly on shoulders. Wings will sprout explicably from back, while main hope to not get too technical will be fulfilled. Before turning, I will wind down the window, turn on signal light, put arm out straight, and touch the air. The last thing I know will be roof on edifice and the truth on the face of it. The truth. <laughs> The book I toss is boss. It bangs against the walls and gets me working. I watch its thin green recede into a reed and think the time right to set the boss right. We argue, cops suddenly appear. I throw them and boss out the window and unscrew my ankles. I be my own boss. I be my own police. This is the right time and place to put on the right face. This is the right hand clutching zinnias in the spine. This is the right side of the brain where a flower bed entices the right person to sleep. This is the right turn we're supposed to make, not miss, to get to the party. Right there, this party is, to the right of the lighthouse, right in the garden. Hmm? Uh, yes. Great mountain chain opens many new mountains daily. Sharp drop in temperatures, resigned savage running dogs to the valleys, barking alleys. Allies many times make up the sole view, greets me like a smack from my porch rocker, comes mumble to teeth. Who's this white mother who don't respect the people? Who this dog who dones pills respect women? Do we recognize he don't recognize the correct way he don't recognize? The contradiction is obvious, therefore the light ain't right, you dig? Tears fall in the tears in my leave and rent weekly to a consciousness been abroad. My hair turns gray as I stand next to the mountains under the scaffolds, painting the snow white and the many snowflakes corn yellow. Thank you. Ted Greenwald, and our first guest was Steve Levine, and it's Goodnight from PAP.
All right, right on. Good evening from PAP. Once again, public access poetry. Next poem you're going to hear is in no way the quality of the rest of the poems you're going to hear for the rest of the night. Our first guest may look sort of mean. His mind, though, they say, is quite keen. The hero of the story from the boys' dormitory, PAP now presents Steve Levine. Steve? <laughs> Idealism. David, dated from Madeira and already world famous, here I start, forever in tears, with armfuls of huge Italian flags. Homage to Kurt Schwitter. Woo it, chew it, tinny who. Shoo it, stew it, tinny who. I grew it, I knew it, blew it too, tinny who. Who you, who you, who is the music of the tinny, tinny who. We keep it here in our shoe, our glorious shoe, holds our tinny who. Who knows what songs it will sing tonight to you? Only the tinny, tin, tin, tiny, tinny who. Tinny wo, tinny ho, tinny who. Tinny, who tinny, who tinny who. The luck of a moat. This is dedicated to Robert Lowell. Guess what? Struck again. Okay? Yeah? Happy? Yeah. Okay? I'll be down Saturday. How is it? Is it big? Ah, oh, good. Or you have to wait for it. I know, that's nice. That is a somber notion. Very humid. Awful. Against the edges. The sea is clear, like an attack. White-skinned banners, lilies fly, and walls a current black and heavily cool. But she, under the blue roof, curtains shadows, hills, and arches, and has the limpid surface broth on our fresh bed, with green swarm of branches, a warm and yellow token of murky duels. Attention in this field seeds some umbrella, holds and crushes white in the grass, a boy, white, a road to the arms of the bed, to the joy soil. Now the walls, breathing, and then this dull surface again, without dredges on. Hey boat, hey arms, the teasing yellow one, the comforting blue one, the willow's released wing, the reeds have been eaten, my tug, tangled, on what? Literal or mud? Do I have more time? Yes. Little feet. Insects and their noises rise in waves and sing along the highway. Hoy, hoy, hoy. Click. Then it occurs to me, maybe Ray Davies' ample big kink in the universe voice is England's answer to some higher order Glen Campbell, hillbilly, dithyrambic ramble. Home. Now I would tell of my great technical skill, discovered in Des Plaines, Illinois, and celebrated in New York City. My scorn as well as rage, fast, clumsy, parenthetical fear, head on fire, collar undone, and ask your pardon for my presumption that's too complex for even me. But in my hut, you are brave and wise and realize it. That's all I can do.